scientists might bring the woolly mammoth back to life. I've been hearing about this since I was a little kid. That actually in the tundra and in Siberia and in Canada, they've found these fairly well-preserved remains of woolly mammoths, not just fossils, but actually like flesh and meat. There was one scientist who, it was so well-preserved, not only have they taken DNA samples, one scientist actually ate a piece of the mammoth meat that is, you know, many thousands of years old, pretty gross. Um, Scientists now believe that they are on the cusp of bringing something like the woolly mammoth back to life. And the something like is the key here. Because you, the question is, can you really bring an extinct animal back to life? And and from a, a biological standpoint, what they would have to do here is they would take these elephant stem cells. So they have a, a line of Asian elephant stem cells, and stem cells are very malleable, so they can be coaxed to transform into other types of cells. So they're going to take the ele- Asian elephant stem cells, and they're going to coax them into uh, behaving like the woolly mammoth cells. And then, because woolly mammoths and elephants are very similar, they're going to try to uh, gestate the woolly mammoth in some kind of elephant womb. And, And then what? One ethical question. Is it okay? It's the Jurassic Park question. We spent so long asking if we could. We never asked if we should. I'm getting the line a little bit wrong, but that's the question. Should we bring an extinct animal back to life? And two, can we? Let's ask the the should first. I really have no problem with it in principle. It's funny because these days, people have no problem on the left and even in a lot of quarters of the right. They have no problem with tinkering around with the origins and destiny of human life but they have some ethical qualms about doing it to hairy elephants. They say, oh, with human beings, yeah, we're going to create human beings in a test tube and we're going to make them to order. So, you know, you want blonde hair and blue eyes and a certain sex and they're going to be bigger, better, faster, stronger and you're going to pay us $200,000 and we're we're just going to mix up all these little ingredients in a Petri dish and then we're going to freeze or kill most of the ones that we don't use, but some we're going to create your designer baby for you. No ethical problem whatsoever. Not only are the Democrats for it, not only are they making this apparently a centerpiece of the 2024 campaign, even a lot of Republicans are saying they're for it. No ethical problems at all. Oh, but hold on. You want to to make a hairy elephant? Mm, I don't know. We need to bring the ethicists in, don't we? Oh, I don't know. What's the morality of that? Call me crazy. I care more about the human being, the little human baby, than I do about the hairy elephant. I think the human baby has more moral significance than the hairy Siberian elephant does. Uh, In principle, I have no problem with with, uh, bringing this woolly mammoth back to life because we are the stewards of creation. And that's the birds and the fish and the plants and the animals. And we do this all the time. We breed animals in a particular way for to help us or even just for our amusement. I think of the bulldog, which is a kind of a hereditary anomaly that we've created, a kind of ghastly monster who's really, really cute. Uh, but that's just a result of, of a particular kind of breeding that gave them the flat face and the curly little tail and the breathing problems. And, you know, they don't move that much. And anyway, uh, I don't have a problem with it. We're the stewards of that, of creation. But then you get to the, can we? And ironically, <laughs> the scientists say, yes, we definitely can, but I don't think we should. And I'm saying, no, we we should. I mean, if we want to, if we do it, you know, within relatively moral parameters. But I don't think that we can because the question becomes, as uh, some scientists are even raising in the reporting here, how is the mammoth going to learn to be a mammoth? Right now, go to luxblocks.com. Use code Michael25. You know, Easter right around the corner. And how about instead of filling your kids' Easter baskets with candy, you consider Lux Blocks. Look how cool these are. Lux Blocks are a toy that even I like. These are my favorite kind of kids' toys is the toys that Mama and Data like as well. Uh, They're really great. You can build them. They've got these really cool colors and designs. It's it's just intricate enough that it's interesting and is a little bit challenging, but simple enough that your little toddler can use them as well. Uh, It's not just the innovative design. It's the story of the creators, Heather and Mike. They've invested their savings into this venture and their vision for a better future. Lux blocks are made right here in America. They wanted to create something that positively empowered kids to think, create, and dream big. So whether you're looking for a gift for a child who loves to build or just a unique addition to your family game night, Lux blocks 
this is the perfect choice. Check them out at luxblocks.com. I feel like I'm an Italian organ grinder. Uh, use code Michael25 for 25% off. That is luxblocks.com. Promo code Michael25 for 25% off. Who's going to teach the baby woolly mammoth how to be a woolly mammoth? The elephant? No, the elephant's going to teach the woolly mammoth how to be an elephant. But a woolly mammoth is different than an elephant. They have totally different habitats. The Asian elephant's not going to be able to live in Siberia. So how, how is the woolly mammoth going to learn the behaviors that are that are appropriate to a woolly mammoth? Elephants and, and mammoths, presumably, are relatively advanced as far as animals go. They're relatively intelligent as far as animals go. How do you do that? And I think this here is the major problem with bringing an extinct species back to life. You, you can't actually do it. The, the very notion that you can just bring an extinct species back to life assumes so many modern liberal premises. It, it assumes a kind of materialism that just... Whatever is needed to become a mammoth, to be, to act like a mammoth, and to thrive as a mammoth, it's just going to be in your DNA. It's all DNA. None of this is learned from parents or grandparents, from the herd, from the pack, from the environment. No, no. It's just all in your DNA or something. Uh, that's That, to me, speaks to a, a very modern materialism. But even more than that, it's this individualism, which is the dominant spirit of our age on the left and, uh, and on the right, which is this notion that, oh, I— I'm fundamentally an individual, and I will thrive most. I will be most my true self as an individual. Society, I don't need society. The left says this when it comes to norms and customs and the moral order. And the right says this when it comes to obligations and when it comes to, specifically when it comes to money. They say, I don't, I don't owe anything to anybody. I don't need anybody. I don't, it takes a village. What are you talking about? Uh-uh, I'm just, I'm me. I'm going to go live on my own in the woods. That's my ideal life. But that's not true. It's not true for humans. It's certainly not true for woolly mammoths. Humans are the political animal. We are the social creature. And that's certainly true of herd animals, of course. Your identity derives from your relation to others. Ultimately, your identity derives from your relation to God. But even at a terrestrial level, your identity is going to come from your family and the town you grew up in, and your community, and the others around you. We're mimetic creatures. Human beings are mimetic creatures. We imitate each other, our, our, the way that we speak, the way that we behave, even the things that we desire, and even the, the virtues that we practice, even the vices that we practice, that, that comes from other people. So if you just create a new individual, whether we're talking about a big hairy elephant or we're talking about a human being, and you just say, okay, here you go, grow up in, a, in isolation somewhere, that isn't that thing is not going to be what it's supposed to be. The mammoth is not going to be the mammoth. The human is not going to be a human. You just can't do it. Whatever they do, they'll do some science experiment probably, and they'll create some kind of animal, and who knows if the animal will even be able to live very long. But whatever that animal is, it's not really a woolly mammoth. And a human being who is totally, totally alienated from society, whatever that thing is, probably not going to be a human being. It's not going to be, it's not going to be recognizably human, at least. That was a great clip, huh? Now, hold up, ring that bell, subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.